Hello, DJ Vic Vapor with you, and welcome to Bitwig Studios Beginner's Course. This is a additional lesson added here near the end for the 1.2 Bitwig Studio update. And I know there's been a lot of changes, but I'm just going to kind of touch base on some of the ones that are more evident to me as I go through various workflows. So if I've missed a few, um, understandably so, I'm just letting you know now that I, my intention isn't to cover every fine uh, detail of every change, just kind of a big broad stroke here of what has been changed and uh, what I've uh, been able to recognize and utilize in my workflow and my um, different productions. So let's see, to start off, what can we start with? Let's go with, uh, well, the one that's pretty much the most obvious is the um, browser device. So if you've already got the update and you've been noticing this screen pop up on you here every once in a while, so this guy right here is just a way for us to kind of browse through all of our different uh, devices, presets, and things of that nature um, with ease. So you can see now I'm actually able to move it around. You can resize it, you know, make it fit where you want so it doesn't have to necessarily take up the entire screen for me. But you can type in the word here, whatever you're looking for. Let's say... Uh, now, keep in mind, before I do any searching here to display it, we've got devices, presets, multi-samples, samples, and music. So there's, you know, there's main categories across the top, and then, of course, our subcategories to search through. So we're in devices. Let's say we'll search for something like uh, filter. So now we've got all of our filter options. So we've got our third-party plug-in options or, you know, Bitwig as well, so we can kind of click here and narrow that down a little bit if you want to go to a specific uh, group that you have on your you know hard drive here so that's one one deal so of course you go to presets uh, bitwig maybe you pick um, let's pick something here like the synth um, poly synth now we've you know we've got additional tags to kind of go down a little bit further and get into you know all the presets so I, I'm enjoying it it takes a little while to get used to because you know it wasn't there for us to start from so it, the habit is always to want to go over to the right where the uh, original panel is housed and kind of work that way but finding this uh, helping the workflow a little bit as far as searching through different uh, you know samples and things of that nature so that's the uh, addition to the browse window of course, then once you, you know, you've got something you like, you just click OK, and then it puts it here for you. So uh, let's see. There's also the oscilloscope itself is new. But what you'll notice now is when you bring a device into the bottom here, whatever device you bring in to use, you now have an in, a device inspector panel. So, and it looks initially like it's just the macros, you know, that you would normally see down here. But that's not the case. I mean, it is to a certain degree, but you actually get a little bit better um, micromanagement, I, I would guess. So let's click on the arrow here and say we're going to assign scale. Um, what else? That's probably about... Uh, let's just go with that. All right, so click back off. But now you see you've got the scale here. And let me bring in something else so it makes a little bit more sense. Let's go with... Delay reverb. Get uh, this guy. Okay, so now if I go back up and click on the arrow, open up some feedbacks, some detune. I'm just randomly grabbing anything here because we're not really trying to do any kind of sound design. We're just doing this for display. So, all right, so now in the device inspector, we've got everything that I touched over here. We've got feedback, vibrato, uh, detune. Do, vibrato rate, high cut feedback. So I can micromanage the settings right here. I can globally manage it here. can also, with this plus and minus, go polar or bipolar, which is a nice little touch. But And then let's say one of the particular ones, I don't like the way it's behaving or the way it's working. I can just delete it by the X and take care of it right there. So that's the device inspector panel and the use of it. And I really, really... I think this is uh, something that's easy to overlook. It can really make a difference in how you're going about your productions and 
you know, getting into the detail of uh, setting up different uh, arrangements. So let's move on. What else do we have here? Um, we have, if you go to Options and Preferences, you now have under the shortcuts, all the keyboard shortcuts, commands, and things of that nature right here. You can edit and reset any way you like. But if you type in something like the word, let's say Q, you can go in here and you can see that you can begin to add different uh, keyboard you know, shortcuts to your liking. So um, you can edit shortcuts on a controller, keyboard, things like that. So what else do we got? Um, yeah, I think that's about it right there. Continuing in that mindset, you also have down here in the corner where my mouse is on the little finger pointing up, you can now do MIDI mapping. So you got controller script if you choose to use that, or you can click MIDI. And now you can go in here and map. Every, and everything kind of gets in that light gray area, which is it's ready to be mapped. So essentially, let's say I'll do volume here. It's waiting for, I don't have my uh, MIDI controller hooked up. But if I did, it would just map, like if I slid that to a slider, it would map that for us. Let's see if, yeah, there it worked. I just used the up and down arrow on the keyboard here, so it got, got that. And then you can go in here uh, and fine tune the actual amount of how far down or up you want that particular item to go or that particular slider or whatever it is you're grabbing. You set your values right here, so. And if you don't like it or don't need it anymore, you can simply delete it and it's gone. So that is MIDI mapping. Let me get rid of that guy, close it out. Let's see. Oh, we did have the oscilloscope. Let me turn this delay off and get rid of it here. So now the oscilloscope. So this guy, of course, is designed to show us different uh, wavelengths and different um, energy patterns over a period of time. Not exactly an expert on an oscilloscope. <laughs> But uh, I can definitely see where it'd be handy if you're trying to, uh, you know, look at your left-right images, your stereo image, over a period of time, the energy in the mount. So, looks like you can link it. And that way you get different colors for each band that you're dealing with, each wave. trigger A, B, you can even have a hold here if you want it to hold so you can have it go a little bit slower if you're just trying to look at maybe the, the bass versus the kick or something like that, it gives you a chance to kind of set that up. You can choose your input right here. Um, and that's kind of, I think, how I would probably particularly be using it is separating bass and kick and things like that. Uh, there might be other frequencies, you know, with um, chords and layers and that nature. Maybe, you know, you want to keep them out of the middle or something like that. So just giving, giving you a different idea where things are going to go and what kind of energy they're producing as you go through any equalization with them. So let's see what else. So the oscilloscope. What? Uh, oh. You can also, let me get rid of this guy. You can also now um, group tracks, of course. So right click and create group. And now you've got a group track situation. If you, if I would have selected multiple ones, it would have put them all in the group. And then of course you can go down here and you know pick whatever device, uh, compressor or something you know that you want to use on the entire group. So grouping tracks. That's something I've been waiting for. I'm so glad it's finally here for us. And then you can ungroup or delete group track right there. So what, oh, and then uh, just in case you haven't taken the chance, go to file since you've now got the 1.2 update or maybe 1.3 at this point. Uh, you can go to package manager and you can kind of see I haven't really done too much but um, you can install and update, and you can see there's been some additions. See, that used to be 65, it's now 104, that was 23, and now 58. And then 
their extended and, and third party um, partner collection as well. You can go down and update and install. I just haven't taken the time to do it. I'm not sure how much of it I'll actually need, so I'll probably browse through it some other time and find out exactly you know what's going on there. But make sure you're taking advantage of that if you, you choose to have you know the full library they offer. That's one way to take care of that right there. And then over on the mix view, let me get rid of this. You now have your scenes, of course, but click this guy right here. And you got like a bigger open display on your scene, like a bigger play button or stop button and things of that nature. And the only thing I can think of, I mean, it's nice. It's a nice feature. Certainly if you have, you know, larger monitors, I guess. But I'm thinking it's more in line with the 1.3 update because now everything's kind of gone to that touch screen where you can, you know, utilize the touch screen. And I would think us utilizing a touch screen, that's a much easier size to handle and something smaller like that. So that might be the purpose of that overall. Um, I'm sure there's other benefits. I just can't think of them right now. So let's see what we've got. So we've got over quite a bit, everything that was kind of on my mind that I know I'd been using in my workflows. So if I've missed anything, you know, like I said at the beginning here, my intention wasn't to hit every exact detail. It was just kind of give you a broad stroke of the updates within 1.2 and kind of add it to this course so that we aren't leaving anything out. So, all right, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for pushing play and uh, hope you enjoyed the update.